Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with Only Fools and Horses Season 7, Episode 2. The Chance of a Lunchtime. That's a very interesting title. Uh, before we jump in, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Oh, you got la, 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 la. Right, now we Okay, we have uh, come on, cup of tea out here for you. Right. Dirty, bro. He dirty for that, bro. <laughs> Never seen the inside of his room. Never once seen the inside of a room. Look at all the Adidas boxes he got, bro. Uh, this is cool, though. I actually get to Here see. Here we are. <laughs> right, now then. Here we go. Who else we got? Nothing like a nice cup of Darjeeling to start the day. That's my motto. Thanks. Ooh. <laughs> so, what are you up to today, then? I'm oh, nothing much. I'm just going to sit around and try and learn this. Yeah, yeah. I wish I'd never agreed to this audition in the first place. I'll never get the part anyway. Hey, come on. You're giving up before you've even started. You don't know how nervous I get at all. She who dares wins. Auditions. <laughs> oh, you'll be terrific. Remember the old saying? Hey? She who dares <laughs> wins. You say so, Dan. Yep. You know, you're the only one who's ever really given me any encouragement. My ex-husband used to laugh at me. To him, ambition, dreams and wonderful things were a waste of time. What? Never lose sight of your dreams, sweetheart. What I've always said, never lose sight of your dreams. Ever. Do you know, when I was 18, I said by the time I was 21, I was going to be a millionaire. Really? Yeah. Then when I was 21, I said, I'll be a millionaire by the time I was 30. And then when I was 30, do you want to try me dodger? <laughs> Lovely. Mm. I've never told anyone this, but do you remember when I was in America for a while? Mm -hmm. Well, while I was there, they were putting on Aida at the Met. Mm -hmm. So I applied for a part in it. I didn't get it. There were union problems, and I wasn't very good. Mm. For a while, my head was filled with big theatres, you know. New York, Broadway, all that. Gay. Stupid. No! Not stupid at all, sweetheart. Not stupid at all. Because you had a go, didn't you? That's the most important thing. You had a go. Anyway, I reckon it was all for the best. How? Well, I eat her at the Met. <laughs> I can't see you playing a policewoman. <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, never lose sight of your dreams. Dead boy is a man that can make you believe in yourself. He can make you believe that you can go out there and accomplish anything. You feel me? I like Dead boy. Although I wouldn't have had to do much research. My husband was a policeman. You did not ever say. No, you did not. You never told me that. Oh dear. <laughs> Do you see much of him? Do you see him at all? No, I haven't seen him for years and years. Why? Me? Nothing. No, I'm just curious, that's all. Get out of here. You never told me that. You better explain it to yourself. Oh. Am I interrupting anything? No. Oh well, better luck next time. <laughs> hey, listen. I'm going round your flat this morning. Do your front door. Now, have you seen Cassandra since she got back? Don't you ask to meet her? Talk things over quietly between yourselves. Well, if she wants to make the first move, fine. Other than that, any time. Well, is there a message that I can give her from you? Yeah, say I still have Vesta. Vesta? Yeah. That's a ball in the bag curry, isn't it? 
Fall in the bag, Curry. <laughs> Come on, Rodney, bro. You're being stubborn. Two people being stubborn are just gonna keep clashing, bro. Somebody's gotta give it, I'm telling you. Put your pride aside. Although that's a lot easier said than done, put it aside. Know what I'm saying? Let her feel like you're the one who gave. Just for the sake of peace, bro. For the sake of coming back together. For the sake of your true love, Rodney. Don't do this to yourself, man. You didn't do any shopping today then, Albert? No, that cup of tea I just bought me made me feel a bit rough. <laughs> You were doing a shopping now. Uh... I've been to lunch with my agent. I wish I had a bag in the fridge. Dell doesn't like fried food. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, it'll have to be egg and bacon. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. Four rations for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, here, when's that order? <laughs> that's the way it goes. Four rations for me, please. Eggs ain't even for the fried, just scramble them or something. They not a fried food. It's not yours. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm auditioning for Rosalind. What should he do? The part of Rosalind. <laughs> I've got to learn the whole of Act 3 scene too by tomorrow morning. I mean, how the hell am I going to do that? Hey, well, don't worry about that. I'll help you. How do you mean? Hmm? I'll rehearse with you. You know, I'll read all the other parts so you can get used to it. You? Yes, me. I used to do a bit of acting <laughs> when I was at school. Bloody good no. I was and all. Yeah. All right, no. Well, thanks. All right, I'll get the no. dinner on. Mm -hmm. He's lying. You used to act at school? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was, um... Uh, I was in the nativity play. Yeah, played the landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Should have seen me there was little Del boy, you know, strutting about. <laughs> and then there was this knock at the door like, you know. Someone answered the door said, I'm sorry, there's no room at the inn. <laughs> yeah, then old Joseph, like he persuaded me to let him keep in the stable. <laughs> I tried to charge him one and six for the night. <laughs> I got the cane for that. <laughs> Those were the days, weren't they? Those were the days. Hey, Rodney, no, 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 Rodney, no, uh-uh. Ring the doorbell. Hey. Ring the doorbell. No, just ring the doorbell. <laughs> oh, my God. Beaver the frogs. <laughs> oh, my days. That would get annoying if someone kept ringing that doorbell. That would get annoying fast. Yeah, what is that thing? Brilliant, isn't it? Ain't it brilliant? It's my musical door chimes, that. Do you know they play 36 different national anthems? 36 oh, different national anthems? You are kidding, aren't you? He ain't kidding, Raquel. I can see it in his eyes. <laughs> How do you know they're genuine national anthems? Of course, they're written on the box here. Look, what can't speak can't lie. Well, I've seen nothing in the Olympic Games. I ain't heard half the tunes this time plays. Yeah, I know, but how many gold medals has Fiji and Borneo won? <laughs> but you see, if they had, you know, in the Olympics, pearl diving and put in the shrunken head, <laughs> you would have heard their national anthems, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, talking of shrunken heads, Rodney, I want a word with you. Yeah, uh, what is it? Uh, listen to me, I was round your place today, right? Fit the new front door. And I had a little chat with Cassandra, and I think she's had a change of heart. Oh, yeah? What makes you think that? Eh? Well, because I had a little chat with her, and she said to me that she still loves you very, very deeply. No, she did. Cassandra said that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much so that she, <clears throat> well, she asked me to ask you if you'd be prepared to meet her tonight. Where? Well, I don't know, something, or is it some little... Uh, I know Del Boy told the same freaking lie to Cassandra. I know, I know he did. It's Del Boy. The same thing he telling Rodney right now is the same thing he told Cassandra. Little uh, restaurant whopping way, I think it is. I don't know. Well, that's not Cassandra's writing. That's my writing, that is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she just told me. I wrote it down on a bit of paper. That's all. There you go. What do you reckon? What do you reckon, eh? Yeah. Well, because, you know, I ain't got nothing better to do. No, oh, good boy, lovely jubbly. But I hope she don't think she can buy me a bottle of wine and walk straight back in my life, though. No. <laughs> I don't think she means that, Rodney. I don't think she does. Because I think she wants to woo again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I booked the, she booked the table for 7.30, right? So look at the time now. Come on, you better get your skates on. Yeah, better have a shower. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. What are you thanking me for? I was just a messenger boy, wasn't I? 
I feel sort of nervous. Nervous? What are you going to be nervous about? She's your wife. I saw the guy. Yeah, I'll just be myself, eh? No, try to make an impression, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. <clears throat> right. Well, are you going out tonight, then? Yeah, I've got to go down and eggs Ed, cos uh, Mike and Trigger want to buy one of my musical doorbells. Oh. Would you want me to drop it off at the pub on my way out? No, 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 I've got to go, Rodney. I mean, I've got to go, cos at the moment, Mike and Trigger don't know they want to buy one of my musical doorbells. <laughs> yeah, they're no, no, coming back and I'm going to help <clears throat> Raquel rehearse her play. Oh, yeah. Mm. You are rehearsing a play? Yeah. Yeah. Raquel's up for some audition. That's right, one of Shakespeare's famous plays. And you are rehearsing it with her? Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, can't you do it now before I go out? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, please, I can do it a lot. <laughs> you know, I see how it's all done. You don't understand, Rodney, you don't understand, do you, eh? I mean, you can't expect an actress of Raquel's caliber just to start rehearsing that and drop of an act. <laughs> you can't expect an actress of Raquel's caliber. <laughs> Of her caliber now? Not her caliber, of her caliber. No. She's got to search for her character, you see, and it's all about motivation. It's all about thought and sensitivity. And that takes time, Rodney. Oh see, that God. takes time. And apart from that, she's only just put the rashes in the pan. <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it, eh? Brilliant. No more of that Avon calling cobblers. Give me that next time, you know, the old stars and stripes. You expect me to have one of them things on my front door? You're keen, I can tell. Tell? They are cheap and tacky. I've got one on my front door. <laughs> you most probably have. You need a brain bypass to have one of them things, Philly. How much are you selling them for, Bill? <laughs> I always love when Trent comes in and asks. I always love those moments, bro. Every time somebody says, you need an idiot. You need somebody completely dumb. You need a brain bypass. I bet you're selling them for a deal. Well, funny you should say that, Trick, because uh, they normally retail at £36, but you can have it for £13.50, including batteries and fitting. Go on in, I'll have one. Good boy, you know it makes sense. <laughs> Oh, I thought you'd ban laughing in this pub. Yeah. <laughs> with that sort, I am. See them two blokes over there? Yeah. They've yeah. been plying her with drinks since six o'clock. I think they're a bit fed up with it now. Really? Uh oh. Would you call her a cab? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you phone for a mini cab? The lady wants to go to Battersea. Oh yeah, yeah. You leave that to me, mate. You see, I've got an understanding with British Telecom. I, I make a phone call and they charge me for it. Oh. I'm sorry, I apologise for him, sir. It's his religion. He's an orthodox tight ass. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Trick? All right. I went down my sister's house at the weekend. So I thought you set my birthday. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Wait a minute, hang on. Your sister's five years younger than you. That'd make, make her 39. I know. But she's a typical woman, she lies about her age. <laughs> oh, that's a family. Oh, mustard, mustard. Raquel's boning up for an audition for a new play. It's uh, As United by Shakespeare. Yeah? Yeah. Will it be on telly? No, 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 not this particular one. It won't probably be in this. But in the West End, something like that. Well, I hope she don't change. Raquel, why should she change? Well, they start mixing with all them posh actors, and the next thing you know, they changed. No, not my Raquel. My sister went out with an actor once. He played a cat in Puss and Boots. <laughs> she suddenly thought she was more intelligent than the rest of the family. Yeah, but if you remember, Trig, you had the same problem with your goldfish, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that, Trig. I'll be back in a minute. Who's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm gonna> <laughs> we got? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> How are you? <laughs> hey. How's the little baby? Oh, he's lovely. He's up there with boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, boysie. Good evening, Derek. Yeah, just saying hello to Marlene. Yes, I noticed you approaching my wife and shaking her warmly by the Aris. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, 
with miserable old sod. He's just having a laugh. Yeah, it's just having a giggle, that's all. Yeah. Come on, let me buy a drink. What do you want? I'll have a large cognac. Molly will have an orange juice. She's just about to drive my son back home. OK. Michael, can I have a small orange, small cognac, and my special, please? Hey, Phil, hey. Look, 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 pictures of the baby oh, here. You? Look. Oh, he's champion, isn't he, sweetheart? Yes, he's got my eyes, hasn't he? Yeah. No, his eyes are all warm and smiley. <laughs> <laughs> so calm, mine. My mum always said you had vampire eyes. <laughs> yeah, well, she should know the old bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she should know the old bat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll tell you what, though, he's got my eyes. Definitely my eyes. What do you. Oh, look at that. I never noticed that. Mike, he's got your mouth. Look. Exactly <laughs> your mouth. <laughs> that is Rodney's nose, if ever I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Coming, honest. Coming, what are you talking about? I ain't talking of Rodney. How is he now? Oh, he's all right, sweetheart. He's fine. Yeah, he's uh, taking Cassandra out tonight, you know, trying to patch things up. Oh. I suppose you've missed him, eh, Dill? Mm. Oops. Oops. Me. Huh? You, mean you must have missed him when he left your partnership. Oh, yeah. I miss him like George Michael misses Andrew Ridgely. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew. See, some of these references I don't get. I wish I knew who George and Andrew were. <laughs> <laughs> That woman is as soppy as the lorry load of monkeys. You know, I got home this evening and discovered some salesman's flogged her a doorbell that plays 36 National Anthem. <laughs> I've got one of them. Yeah, so I'd have put money on that trip. The difference is, I live in a mock Georgian mansion on Kings Avenue. And our neighbours are not going to appreciate being awoken by the sound of long-lived Swaziland every time the milkman calls. <laughs> Oh, he still calls round then, does he? Come <laughs> on, phone now, boys. Don't be too late. No, I'll be about an hour. You'll know it's me. I'll play Mexico Forever on the front door. <laughs> Wave goodbye to you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> they are waving at him. <laughs> Y'all work it out. So, how was Spain? Oh, you know, okay. Good. Did you do anything interesting? No, not really. It's just Mummy and I at the villa. To be honest, it was a bit boring. Oh, I can imagine. I've been going with my mother to be because she's not a boring person. <clears throat> I know what you meant. Good. Excuse me. Do you want a glass or something? I have the same as you. Well, it's mineral water. That makes a nice change. I heard you've been drinking heavily. <laughs> heavily. Silly. Uh, can I have a glass of mineral water, please? Oh, I think your father was exaggerating slightly, Cassandra. Daddy didn't tell me it was Dell. <laughs> yeah, a bit, uh, a bit overboard, you know, when we when we left each other. You mean when you left me? Same thing. No, it isn't. I didn't go anywhere, Roddy. I was at the flat waiting for you. You just didn't come home. Dang. Yeah, well, we can't. I thought she kicked him out. Like um, I, I really thought she kicked him out. So Rodney just left of his own accord, like an idiot, like a Wally. Like a plonker. Rodney really is dumb. I'm here to discuss these things, didn't we? Not too well, kid. He really is so freaking dumb, I swear. Started it. I didn't. <laughs> I came home when he was on holiday and I found you changed the locks on the front door. Yeah, well, I should have told you. But that was no reason to kick the door in. I didn't kick the door in. I just sort of... You know, 
fine. So I can go. Why did you go back there? I wanted to surprise you. You did surprise me. I didn't expect to come home to find my husband had kicked the front door in. <laughs> Look, I've got just as much right to enter that flat as you, Cassandra. We have got a joint mortgage, remember, from the bank. And what about that girl you took out? I didn't take any girl out. You asked a girl out? That was just to make you jealous. It was a stupid idea and I never went through with it. That was so... Bro, Rodney, like... I don't understand how dumb you can be, bro. Like, I don't... I Logically, my brain is not fathoming how idiotic that you can possibly be. That's the stupidest idea you could have ever thought of. Like, oh my... I don't even... I'm, I'm Team Cassandra. And usually I try to ride for my guys. I try, I try to have my guys back, but... I can't, I can't even have your back, Rodney. Although at this moment in time, it strikes me as being one of my better moves. But this is obviously going to be a total waste of a good evening. Just think of all the more interesting things I could be doing. Like washing my hair. Oh, and what about me? I passed up the chance to watch Dell rehearse a Shakespeare play. People would pay a fortune for something like that, and I'd have paid for nothing. I came here this evening hoping that you and I could find some common ground on which to base our future. But it's pointless. I'm glad I found out this early on in our marriage what you're really like. Dang. Your drinking, your bouts of violence. God, I can just imagine my future with someone like you. Oh. You really are the silliest, pettiest, most childish person I ever had the misfortune to marry. You fine. Okay, sorry, now you're hitting below the belt a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. You, them insults are, they, they're getting a little harsh. They're getting a little harsh. But what Rodney smiling about? Why are you smiling after she said that? See me, don't you? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yes, you do. You little slurp, yeah. I hate you. I wanted this to be serious. I wanted to really tear into you. Oh, so that's why you asked to meet me? I asked to meet you. You must be joking, Roddy. You're the one that did the asking. No, Del come home and he said you'd ask to meet me. And you'd suggested this venue. Rodney, Derek brought a message round from you. He said you wanted to meet in this rest. <laughs> Del. They idiots. They should have obviously known. That was obvious that Del did that. But I'm so glad that he did. Del. Del. Kit. <laughs> so now what do we do? I don't know. You show me your ten? Yeah. <laughs> Can I take you all the same? No, I've lost my appetite. Same piece. <laughs> That's the new key. I've got to go around to Mummy and Daddy's. I've left some of my clothes at their house. It won't be too long, will it? About an hour or so. Do you remember your way home? I remember. In case yeah, you get yeah, confused, yeah. we've got a new front door. Yes. Well, I'll see you in bed in about half an hour. <laughs> Simply. Yes, 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 yes. All right, Cassandra, I thought you was a little harsh with the comments, but I guess I was wrong. You know, that's your little joking, your little joking side. It's like, you fancy me, don't you? You know what I'm saying? Rodney, I thought you were a plonker, but hey, you knew exactly what to say to win your woman back. And now that they're back together, I can smile again. I can show my happiness. This is true love. And true love shouldn't split like that. God dang, damn! <laughs> I, I know my laugh, it, it can be an annoying laugh. I know my laugh, uh, it's it's not the greatest laugh, it's not the quietest laugh, it can be quite loud, sometimes annoying. But that laugh, that's, that's, that's much more annoying, that's as annoying as it gets. I would never want to crack a joke around her. I, because I do not want to hear that laugh, bro. Oh <laughs> Gonna have trouble with that one, Michael. Yeah, don't I know it. The sooner that minicab arrives, the better. Mm. 
disgusting, isn't it? It's disgusting. I like a lady to be a lady, you know what I mean? I can't stand a woman being drunk, staggering around a pub, dropping her crisps all over the place, you know what I mean? I remember your mum. <laughs> what do you mean by that trick? <laughs> she was a lady, wasn't she? Oh. Oh, yeah. My mum was a lady, you know. Do you know she was the first woman in Peckham to smoke menthol cigarettes? <laughs> Oh my god. What a state of that. I wouldn't be seen dead with that. Let alone admit knowing it. God dear. Damn! Oh blimey. How are you, darling? <laughs> oh, trippy, trippy, yeah. How long's it been then? <laughs> What bit? Since we last saw each other. Oh. <laughs> Have we met? Oh. You don't remember me, do you? No, I don't. It's Trudy. Trudy. <laughs> Trudy. Were we engaged? Oh yes. <laughs> oh, you ain't half changed, sweetheart. Well, ain't we all lovely? Look, hang on a minute. Hang on. I'll just go and get me drink. <laughs> I've gone right off that hot dog, Mike. <laughs> well, we might get up. You mean Cassie, we're back together. Well oh. done, brother. Yeah, great. Oh, Mike, there's, well, there's a mini cab outside for somebody. Yeah, uh, that'll be for your ex fiance, Derek. <laughs> get her out where we are. All right, Mike, give us a minute. Will you give me a minute? Oh, yeah, it's not another old fiance. Yeah, is it? I'm sorry, Rodney. I was very young at the time. It is. Cassandra, she's not out there in a van, is she? No, no, she's gone round to her mum and dad's place to pick something up. I'll just come round and tell you I won't be home tonight. No, what you mean is, Roddy, what you mean is you will be home tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah my real life. Yeah, that's right. Well, um, there's your key. Oh, you? right, Joe. And thanks for having me. No, Rodney, come on. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Cassandra didn't ask to meet me, did she? No. I lied. You're a conniving <laughs> git, ain't you? <laughs> it worked though, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. mm. I've just seen Raquel and Albert getting off the bus. Raquel? Raquel's coming wow. in here! She can't see me with that true, do you know how jealous she gets? No, oh, Del. Look out. Bill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me everything that's been happening then. Well, I... <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I love you, sweetheart, but your cab has just arrived. Oh, oh look, look, Del. Mm. Why don't you come back to my place and we can no. talk about old times? <laughs> 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 no, I'd love to, sweetheart. I'd love to. But you see, I've got to stay here and talk oh. some business with these gentlemen, you see. Rodney, will you escort this lady to her cab? Yes, yeah. there you go. I'll see you then, Del. Right, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Del, do you come in this pub often, then? No, no, no. I've never been in here before in my life, have I, Mike? That's right. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sweetheart. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I swear Cassandra better not got Daddy see him walking out of there. She better not just decide to pull up to the pub. She better not. <laughs> oh, is this a red car? It's my car, isn't yeah, it? It's lovely. Oh, just turn up, Rodney. I'll stay with you. You're all right. You'll yeah. be all right. Mate, oh, you're oh, the oh, yes. oh, they're like, just oh, this is nice. <laughs> 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 Don't you hate when that crap? It just frustrates me to no end. Like, of course. What? What's the chance? What are the chances? What's the luck? Cassie! <laughs> oh my God! Cass, unlock the door. Cass! Cass, we gotta talk! Look, Cass, that girl was nothing to do with me. She was some old sort Dell was engaged two years ago. Well, Cass, at least let's talk! Is that the right Cassie. door? Cassie! Cass. <laughs> of course, of course, they'll voice over their door, man. It's the right door, alright. Why 
no means, sir. Time travels in diverse places with diverse persons. I'll tell you who time ambles with all, who time trots with all, who time gallops with all, and who he stands still with all. That's it! Bloody good! Bloody good, Raquel! Orlando. Hey. Orlando. All oh, right. Oh, yes, yes, me. Hi, <clears throat> Privy, who doth he trot with all? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm acting. No, oh, don't! Just read it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> right, privy, who doth he trot with all? Is that all right? Yes. Mary, he trots hard with a young maid between the contract of her marriage and the day it is solemnised. For if the interim be but a semite, time's pace is so hard that it seems the length of, of seven years. When have you got to learn this, boy? Tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell right, I'm gonna make a real mess of this audition. No, you're not, sweetheart. I love, I love, no, no, girl's Trudy's slap is absolutely awful. I love Uncle Albert's slap, bro. His slap kills me. No, you're not. She's gonna be terrific, isn't she, Albert? Of course you are. And even if you're not, what have you lost? What do you mean, what have I lost? Well, it's only a bunch of Nancy actors doing a play which no one can make it in the tail of. <laughs> there. That makes you feel much better, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> you dozy old twonk. This is authentic culture, this stuff is. You just shut your gob, will ya? <laughs> Shall we continue, sweetheart? You sure you don't mind doing this? No, of course I don't. I mean, I'm enjoying myself. This is a blinding play. Thanks. Shall we yeah. start at the beginning? No, let's go on a bit, shall we? Just move on. <laughs> Save by the doorbell. <laughs> What are you doing here? I thought you were staying at your own place tonight. We've broken up. You... <laughs> You've broken up? What are you talking about? You've only been together an hour. What happened? She saw me standing outside the nag's head with my arm around bloody Trudy. You had your arm around another woman? Well, no wonder she's thrown you out. Serves you right, doesn't it, Rodney? Well, Trudy was nothing to do with me. She was your sort uh, of devil. Uh... <laughs> she was... <laughs> She... She... Just a friend. Oh, just a friend, eh? How many times have I heard that? I've got no pity for you. In fact, you disgust me. Wouldn't do you any harm to take a leaf out of Dell's book. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sweetheart. I'll see you a little later. Don't you look at me in that tone of voice, Rodney. <laughs> How was I to know that Cassandra would see you? And anyway, what was you doing with your arm round Trudy? Stopping her from falling flat on her bloody face. <laughs> Do you reckon Cassandra would tell her dead? No, no, no. She'll keep it personal between her and Rodney. Uh-oh. Neon, where you go? Uh, Trotters International Traders, PLC. <laughs> oh, hello, Alan. Uh, no, sorry, he's not in. No, the don't say that. You just said don't say oh. No, sorry, what I mean, he's not in the room. He's in the, in the, ba in the bathroom. Yeah. All right. No, I'll take a message, yeah? Yep. He's OK. Fine. All right, Alan, TTFN then. Bye. <sighs> Wants to see you in work tomorrow, first of all. God dang. It's all right, Rodney, it's all right. Don't worry. It's probably something to do with the business, that's all. Anyway, I'm going to go off and help Raquel rehearse her play. Now, if you hear any funny noises, right, don't worry, because it'll be me rehearsing my speech for Agincourt. Well, that's it, isn't it? Alan is going to sack me. God, sack you. Well, of course he can. He owns a firm, doesn't he? That printing shop of his is overloaded with work. He's got orders coming out of his ears. Everyone's working overtime on weekends. So what you're saying, he'll wait till the rush is on, though? In the war. Oh no, um, <laughs> not the U-boat on the field again. We ain't got time. We ain't got time for no war stories, Doug. Come on now. We docked in Valletta on our way to Greece. We had a chief communications officer on board, Tuppy Fox. It's a funny name for a ship, isn't it? <laughs> that was the officer's name. Now, Tubby, old Tubby, he liked to live it up once in a while. And one night he was on duty and the captain come in in the radio room and caught him with a Maltese girl in one hand and a bottle of gin with the other. 
put him under arrest and started court martial proceedings. Albert, is there any point oh, to this story, or are you just rambling? The Navy had a wartime rule. Only commissioned officers were allowed to control the radio room. Yeah, you're just rambling. Now, Tommy Fox was the only communications officer on board. Do so you know what he did? I don't care what he did. He resigned his commission, which meant... I don't know. Which meant the ship couldn't sail. The captain had no choice but to refuse to accept Tubby's resignation. Once he'd done that, he could proceed with the court-martial. It was checkmate. I see. inside of me right now do not listen to uncle albert bro you cannot so they needed him more than he needed them exactly what i'm trying to say is realize your own importance tubby fox did and he went on to command his own submarine under yeah. you're right oh my god Jesus. yeah Died in Palermo Harbour. <laughs> Dropped a depth charge in nine foot of water. Alan, there's a letter for you waiting on the desk. Yeah, yeah, I'll deal with it later. I wanted to see you. Yeah, Dale said you wanted to see me. Look, um, you know that lunch we had with Ron Carey from the Harvey's Mail Order people? Oh, yeah, vaguely. That was months ago. Well, we got the contract. You're kidding. A three-year deal. We had all their junk mail, all their catalogues and all their office stationery. Well, that's massive. <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> I think we can safely say we'll be having roast turkey again this Christmas. Yeah, but how are we going to handle it? We've barely got the staff or the room to cope with our present workload. We take on more staff and we move to a bigger workshop. That's what I wanted to see you about. I've been looking at some new premises. I'd like you to see them. Ah, oh, Dave. Well, where are they? You know that new industrial estate out at Nunhead? Alan, about last night. Last night? Yeah. You know, what happened with me and Cassandra? Oh, that! Well, needless to say, Pam and I were delighted with the news. Delighted? Well, Cassandra came home and told us you were back together. Oh, yeah. Well, I wanted to talk to you about what happened after that. Rodney, I'm a man of the world, but I'm also Cassandra's father. <laughs> I, I understand, Alan. I understand. We all understand. Um, dang, see, that's why I don't think I can have a doctor, man. Can't do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Group F. All right, sweetheart. What are you doing here? Hmm? Oh, well, uh, you know, I just happened to be passing. I thought I'd pop in and give you a lift home. Uh, Del, this is Adrian. He's the director. Um, Adrian, this is Derek. He's, uh, he's a friend. Oh, pleased to meet you. Yeah, and you. He's a friend? A friend? Uh, what do you mean? A friend, Raquel? Okay. I'm not going to say that. Right, then you. Yeah. 
Sir, how'd she do? What, the audition? Yeah. Very well. Cushy. Cushy? They can't be there, can they? I told you'd be no trouble. You shouldn't ask questions like that. Oh, shut up, you're too picky. That's your problem. So, uh, what can I get you? A uh, small dry sherry, please, Adrian. Yeah, uh, same here. <laughs> right. Um, I'll have a clear. So, uh, are you uh, in the business, Derek? No, no, no. No, I'm, uh, I'm importer, exporter. I deal in fine antiques, quality objet d'art, mobile telephones, that sort of thing. <laughs> Which, whilst we're on the subject, Adrian, I happen to be doing a very nice line in computerised communication systems, which I believe would be right up your street. It's a musical doorbell. See, what happens, when you press the Derek, button... Uh, this is Jules. <laughs> Jules is our set designer. Jules, this is Derek, uh, Raquel's friend. Hi. <laughs> right? Oh, give me some vitamin C. I feel absolutely wrecked. <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, let's go and sit down at the table, shall we? Right, uh, I'll just grab some food. Mm, I feel a bit peckish as well. Yeah, so do I. I think... Mm, uh-oh. Well, go and sit at the table. I need to talk to him. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I think I can design magnificent stage sets on peanuts. I mean, these people don't have a budget. It's more like a whip run. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's a bark, isn't it? <laughs> Feel my hands. Feel my hands. <laughs> oh, no. Those are calluses. I'm the set designer, yet I have to help unload the lorries. Did I go to art college for three years for that? No, no, of course not. <laughs> See the match the other night? <laughs> match? What match? You know, the one between England and Yugoslavia. No, I'm not really interested in football. You were lucky. You were dead lucky. I mean, some of the decisions that ref made were criminal. They were. I mean, we was robbed. We was robbed. I mean, they showed the match on Grandstand. I said to my brother Rodney, I said, they should have shown it on Crime Watch. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what I did watch, mm. that Elizabeth Taylor film, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Oh, isn't she the most gorgeous creature ever? Oh, yeah. Pity she got fat, wasn't it? <laughs> but Derek, her bone structure and her eyes, her eyes simply sparkle. And her hair, her hair cascades everywhere. see these new premises Alan's going after, you know. They're cosmic, they're modern, they're big. Yeah, you told us about 30 times already. I ain't never seen a place, but I, I feel like I could give you a guided tour. Well, I'm excited, ain't I? I tell you, Alan, he's going places. <laughs> he's not the only one that's going places. Here, Raquel, I'm going to get all the hours to come down to your first night. Hey, Raquel? Raquel? Uh-oh. Sorry, what'd you say? I said I'm going to get all the boys to come down to your first night, you know, Trigger, Boise, Rodney, me, a lot. And then when you come on stage, we're all going to give you a big cheer, like we're all going to go, Ray! And that, what's his name, that Avery, will think that you got a fan club already, will he? Hey? Okay, thanks. Oh, cheer up, girl, you got the part, didn't you? Yeah, I got the part, Albert. Yeah, here we go then. Yeah, oh, sweetheart, get that down. Yeah. No, not for me, darling. Now, come on, sweetie. I don't come on just to celebrate your job, you well, I've got this letter to read. It's all the details of the player. I'd like to read it with a clear head. I'll see you in a little while. Yeah, oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, what's wrong with Raquel? Why is she acting like that? What's that? Right. Ever since she's come back from that audition with that Adrian and all them other actors, she's been different. I don't know, maybe we embarrass her or something. Oh, Raquel's not like that. You don't know, Rodney. A cravat and a codpiece can turn a girl's head. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? 
Alan, yeah, I've just been telling Della and Albert about their new premises. I was thinking, if we... What letter? Oh, yeah, that letter. Yeah, let me explain. It was, um, well, it was a token, a, a gesture. Yeah. Well, the situation that existed then between Cassandra and I may have been causing you some embarrassment, and, well, I just wanted you to know that I was aware of it. Yeah. Uh, just let me get this straight, Alan. When you say you've accepted my letter of resignation, what exactly do you mean? <laughs> I see, yes. Thank you. You handed in your resignation. I thought it was best. You stupid little plonker. As you guy. That's the I'm... bestest job you've ever had, or ever likely to have, and you've chucked it away. Listen, I am in control of my own destiny. I am my own man. I make my own decisions in this world. Then why did you resign? Because he told me to. <laughs> <laughs> I never said a word. <laughs> well, you told me about that bloke on the boat who put in his resignation to get out of the court martial. Well, that was different, son. How? Well, he got away with it. <laughs> I didn't think Alan would accept my resignation. But he did. Yeah, I know, he did. I thought I was too important to the firm. But you weren't. Yeah, I know, I won't bloody know now, don't I? <laughs> all right, all right, calm down then, calm down. Give Alan a bell, see if I can get him to change his mind for you. Well, it's too late. Right. He's already found somebody to replace me. Well, that was bloody quick, wasn't it? It's my assistant. Assistant? What, that little kid? Yes. That snotty nosed Herbert who's just left school? Yes. Elvis? Yes. He's doing what you were doing? Yes. Elvis, he ain't daft. Still, there's no worry about him winning blockbusters, though, is there? <laughs> <laughs> he was the one that thought sugar diabetes was a Welsh flyweight. <laughs> Look, he is just filling the gap until Alan finds someone of my expertise to take over. It's just strange that they should replace you with a silly boy. Why don't you just stay out of this, Albert? Oi, 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 Don't you talk to an old war hero like that? Well, he's getting on me bloody nerves going on and on. <laughs> it's your own fault, Rodney. You've got no one else to blame. you got a lovely wife, a lovely flat, the bestest job in the whole world, and you blew it. Thanks. Who was that bloke you was having lunch with today? <laughs> <laughs> that, you, that was just one of Raquel's artistic friends. Right? What bloke's that then, Neil? You shut up, stay out of this album. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's right, bro. Uh, Rodney, bro, he's literally blowing everything, bro. It's crazy. It's, I don't know what's wrong with the man. I don't, I honestly, truly don't know what's wrong with him. <laughs> I didn't think about it, but Raquel's just probably scared, bro, like... Of course, you always dream of having that moment. You dream of getting that, getting the act of the play. You dream of getting a part, of getting the role. But actually getting it is a completely different story because now there's pressure. Now, 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 that that's when the nervousness hits you, the fear hits you, the fright hits you. So that might be what's bothering Raquel. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I thought she was just switching up on them. Look okay. terrified. Yeah, fine. <clears throat> read your letter about your play, then? Yeah, I've read it. Uh, look, sweetheart, if we've had a row, could you at least tell me about it? We well, haven't had a row. Everything's fine. It's not fine, Raquel. It's not fine. Ever since you came back from that audition with that Adrian and Jules and all them others, you've been different towards me. I mean, what is it? Aren't I as good as those actor cronies? Do I embarrass you? Well, don't be stupid, Dad. I am not stupid, Raquel. I'm not being stupid. Because I saw your face, you see. 
tussle your face when that Adrian asked me what I thought about Hamlet. And I said I preferred Costellas. <laughs> so, you start rehearsals. So it doesn't start for another three months. Oh, well, that's all right then, isn't it, eh? Does she gotta travel? Is that what it is? Is somewhere else? I don't. I don't know. I thought it was fear, but it don't look like fear in her face. It don't look like fright. It's something different. I know she didn't sleep with Alan. I know she didn't betray Dale. So the only thing I can think is that the play is somewhere like she's gonna have to move to or is very far away. Is the only thing I can think of. Get time to meet some more of your intelligent sensitive actor people, don't you? Derek, will you get it into your thick skull? I'm not trying to meet intelligent and sensitive people. I'm happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the problem, then? Tour. Did you say this thing was a tour? That's right. It's a nine-week tour of the country. Mm. Oh, well, I didn't know that, did I? I mean, I didn't know that. I thought it was like, you know, a play that you put on local and... Oh, I see that now. Oh, that's that's it, is it? Right, eh? The lure of the big theatres. The applause, the applause, the show must go on and all that. We're not appearing in theatres. If you're not appearing in theatres, then where are you appearing? Schools. Schools? Yes, schools. It's a co-project between the Education and the Arts Councils. We're supposed to take Shakespeare to the inner cities. Imagine what it might have done for me. Yeah. Could have ended up being a dinner lady. <laughs> <laughs> Don't become like all the others, Del. Putting down every little dream I have. I'm not trying to put your dreams down, sweetheart. You know, I never do that. It's just so. I don't want you to leave me. Frightened you might not come back. Oh my god. I'm not going anywhere, Del. I'm turning the offer down. You can't do that, sweetheart. You can't do that. No, this is, you know, this is a golden opportunity, this. Just don't worry about me. I'm just, you know, I'm just being a bit selfish, this all. I can't do that to her, Del. Why not? She's pregnant. Because I've read the play again and again, and at no point does Shakespeare mention that Rosalind is pregnant. Is pregnant. No! <laughs> I know she's sad in this moment, and I don't know. <laughs> that took a lot of energy out of me. <laughs> I don't know if I should be this joyous about this, but. Bell Boy's gonna have a kid. He's gonna have a kid. He raised Rodney. He don't he, he know what it's like to be a dad about basically already. He's gonna have his own kid, bro. This is crazy. Oh, this show's so good. This show, I didn't see it coming. They blind, so I didn't know what was wrong with her. I didn't know, I, I thought it was stage fright. I thought it, Possibly betrayal, but I was like, that's not, that's not likely. Uh, I thought, I thought, dang, she didn't want to leave Dell for nine weeks. I thought this and that and this and this. She's pregnant, yeah. I see why the tears are like, her whole life's about to change. Like, everything's about to change. But you're about to have a blessing. You're about to have a miracle. You're about to have a kid. Oh my gosh, I love it. All right. Here we go. Talk to me. It's always poetic license, isn't there? Did <laughs> 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 you say you was pregnant? I've done all the tests and everything. It's certain. Uh...
No. Of course not. Angry. Happiest man on earth. How many people do you see standing there? Bro, I'm so happy for Dale and Raquel. That's all we got. You guys have a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. It's your boy D.D.L. Out.